everyone. This is the Great North Pagan Podcast. Call it in on Wednesday, March the 27th, 2013. This is Thomas Landlord Putton. And Aaron Lisi. Yes, this episode we are reviewing uh, Paganicon 2013 that we just came back a week and a half ago. So, everyone, how are you feeling? Awesome. awesome. Yeah, I believe it's a week and a half already. Yeah, I know. It's, we're not the only ones, if you know. We got Dee and Ernie from the prior episode, and we got Joy, who is no stranger to the podcast. What's my name? Azure Star? There you go. Anyway, <laughs> what did you guys think? I loved the, the Paganicon. It was wonderful. There was a lot of great speakers. There was a lot of education there, a lot of good people there. We made a lot of really good um, contacts with a lot of groups from there. Um, a lot of um, showing of the covens down there coming out and hosting um, guest rooms to go to. So that was very nice to see this year. Last year, there wasn't so much of that. So um, Standing Rock Coven, the Crossroads Coven, um, the one I'm can't remember all of them. I'm sorry, guys, if I don't remember all of you. Summerland Festival was there. Um, made a lot of good friends through all of those different um, people that made the part that did the party rooms down there. So, thank you, guys. Thank you. That was awesome. As well as Pagan Living TV was there as well. Yes, we got to meet and befriend author Brandy Williams. Fabulous. Wonderful woman. Wonderful woman. And there was a lot of different classes that were there that you could learn on a lot of things that you didn't know about. Or for freshmen, some some things that you may need a refresher on. And um, Orion Foxwood was a really great speaker. Hysterically funny. Wonderful man. Extremely busy. Uh, Did a lot of good workings there. And then uh, we have a new radio station and DJ, DJ Silver Wolf. What's the name of his radio station? Um, the St. Cloud Pagan Radio, I believe it is. Um, that's they will post the links in the description. You can so you can see for yourself that we got in touch with their who. Yeah, he was he was basically the the DJ at the ball, which was wonderful. I mean, if you've ever heard any sort of DJ. Think of where they probably they just had the the rock and roll music, but then they added also the pagan music. They they played Lorena McKenna. They had S.G. Tucker in it. Yeah, he was wonderful. A lot of play. variety. A lot of variety. Yeah. Yep, there, his model is turning wedding jitters into bliss. Mm-hmm. So if you ever if you ever want any spiritual music for any of your events, you'd contact him as well as we did for contact him as well. But yeah, his um, address is silverwolfentertainment.com. Mm-hmm. Excellent man. Wonderful person. I really enjoyed talking to him. Um, he said that it's really nice to start hearing uh, pagan radio stations that are in this area now. And um, he also enjoyed pagan living as well. He, he had plugged that and said that they were really good people to work with as well. Yeah, that was wonderful. The, the coven that was at the Pagan Pride Day last fall was also down there. I got to visit with them as well. They did a wonderful ritual for to Lady Hathor for the, the, coming, the coming of spring. The absolute most wonderful thing was the vending. We absolutely loved to go to the vending shops. There was just anything and everything that was all nature, that was pagan, that was um, interfaith was there. And my favorite, of course, Circle Sanctuary was there this year to vending. <laughs> <Woo-hoo>. <laughs> and hopefully we'll be back next year. And so we'd like to see a lot of, more of that. I really liked seeing the smithmanship of the Omega um, stand that was their vendor. Because some of the knives, the ritual knives that he created were so impressive uh, and beautiful. Oh my goodness, the work that went in there, I cannot even begin to imagine. I, all all the craftsmanship in there and all of it by hand. I bought my wand there. I bought a wand. Beautiful. And he's extremely knowledgeable about the pieces. You know, we had talked about building a sword for Ernie. 
Mm -hmm. He's a large man, so we wanted something with both hands, and he said, I can do that. And we wanted a Taurus sign or the or the Thor's hammer on it, or we gave him so many suggestions, and he was just quiet. I can do that. I can do that. He builds pieces by the person. Yeah. It was very a, reasonably priced, too, I thought, when he quoted. It was very reasonably priced, I thought. Yeah, right. yeah, that was Omega Artworks, by the way. Um, I spoke to the lady that was there, and she said that she had been experienced doing uh, any sort of sword or whatever or sort of weapon you wanted to do, like for the past thirty-two years. Yep, athames, bowlings, swords, wands. They did a magnificent collection of wands. Mm -hmm. I was really, really impressed with their wands, and like I said, all built specifically to p the person. So, a little bit of everything there too at the bending area. The gentleman who had all made of wood. That was very interesting. Oh, yeah. yeah. And all the jewelry, and they even had the uh, a little back rub for some people if they wanted a free back rub, a little massage. And then the, the painting, the henna. Mm -hmm. henna, henna painting, yeah, art, yeah. or yeah, body art. Some Minneapolis based shops were there Keys of Paradise, Eye of Horus, Magus Books, all of them, if you're familiar with any of those in the Minneapolis area. They were wonderful to come out and bend. I am a fan of all. <laughs> Anytime you're in that Minneapolis, area, yeah. you got to go visit them. Mm -hmm. yes. It's yes. nice to see that Paganicon in the cities is getting as wonderful. I mean, it's a small, like the holistic fair here um, in Fargo. It's really uh, getting to be big like the holistic fair. I think it's going to be bigger even next year. So it's growing. Mm -hmm. There's a shop of um, Rhiannon, <coughs> who is also does uh, the Renaissance Fair circuit. She is her own booth at the Minnesota Renaissance Fair, and I know she and her um, her husband was um, working out of the Florida Renaissance Fair as Pagan account was going on. So there's another aspect and another shop to check out when you have time. Mm -hmm. What was the most interesting of uh, the lectures and the information that you guys thought? Mine, I guess, would have to be the panel that was on the fairy magic. That was very good. Um, they had one of the, the owners, her name was Jane from Iowa Horse, and then another lady named Veronica Cummers, and then Orion Foxwood. And if you are interested in anything about fae, um, Orion Foxwood has a book out on the fairy magic and rituals and stuff like that and the other two ladies that were there from the Minneapolis area referred me to his book as being one of the best or the better books that were written about that subject so that was very interesting and then some of the literature I got about the um, crossroads which is a southern type of conjuring and magic was very very informative so if you guys are ever interested in that, look up Orion Foxwood, and he's got some really good literature out there that, you know, if you're interested, that's where I would go. I know there was one class I, I thought some of us attended to was the, the one on the, the family history. Yes, I enjoyed that immensely. Immensely. I found it very informative. It appealed to my... Uh, librarian geeky side um, to be able to do research and um, I you know honestly I've already started I um, have a Norwegian and uh, Irish background and I've started uh, talking to my family members and finding out what avenues they've already used to research history and um, talked about even an ancestor altar which I would love to set up um, to be able to honor those and to keep them with me at all times. My um, maternal grandmother is with me all the time. I love you, Grandma Fran. Um, <laughs> and this is allowing me to get to know um, ancestors beyond that. And it was, um, we got research, um, websites available, um, you know, materials to look up and different ways to go about hunting, whether, you know, you have the financial means to do that or if you, you know, through free websites. So definitely, definitely informative. My um, personal favorite was, um, <laughs> conveniently enough, librarian related about um, research in general, whatever topic you find. Um, I spoke about uh, was the Seeking Knowledge, Finding Wisdom um, little seminar, and it, it talked about 
uh, how to use the library and all of its resources to your advantage. Um, even the internet, um, being able to be uh, proficient in Google and how to Google properly um, to find what you need. Um, talked about using library systems and uh, how to get, you know, if your local library doesn't have it, there's inter, you know, a national interlibrary system to be able to access books that you know, are available elsewhere. Um, also, university library systems. So, um, you know, it appeals to the geek in me and the research and book, you know, aspect. So, <laughs> I definitely had a blast, and it was my first time experiencing Paganicon, and I cannot wait to do it again. It was just fabulous. It was <laughs> the first time for me as well. So, the one thing I did was the, the nature hike. It was a small group compared to last year, because, of course, last year was so warm as ever, but it was just me and three others that we we drove out to the local park mm -hmm. and we just walked out in the snow and we took note of a lot of the different trees that were out there most of the fact that there was people that were skiing across the frozen lake I never knew you could do that but it, it was just as any pagan of any of us could tell you it's a nice feeling even when it's still chilly out there to just be walking out in the midst of nature hearing the birds wake up and notice the fact that the the tree branches are all starting to bud out their leaves just slowly but steadily just waiting for that right moment what was anything that you thought might have could have used a little tweaking i'd like to talk about one of the things that i did enjoy and that was uh, magenta griffith's um podcast or or uh, seminar, seminar yeah. on crowley that was amazing she was wonderful she was very informative. It brought me back to my own roots, which is steeped deep in Crowley um, history. And that brought us actually to speak with Brandy Williams and her husband later on because we actually took that seminar with Brandy Williams. She found it very interesting and her husband did. And they introduced us in <clears throat> to going to a agnostic um, Crowley born uh, coven and really take partake in one of their uh, religious ceremonies which was absolutely beautiful it was very straight and narrow it was um, almost dogmatic like in the old way before dogma became a bad word to us pagans but very beautifully performed um, the ritual was absolutely gorgeous uh, the ceremonial magic was was unbelievably top shelf it was absolutely perfect um, the people there were extremely nice even though we were late they gave us credit for being on pagan time which <laughs> I really yeah. appreciate sorry about that it, it, means be, it makes it be that they, they have that terminology just as much as we do up here <laughs> right we got lost due to the fact that we're from Fargo and not driving in the cities we didn't drive very well so um, I really enjoyed that. Mostly I enjoyed the fact that we were invited because we took interest in this particular um, seminar, in the Crowley seminar. It was, it was, it makes you wonder and want to study more about the roots and history of Wicca, neo-paganism, and paganism. Um, it was very informative. I enjoyed that part of it myself. As far as what I thought needed a little tweaking, um, I think I would have liked to have seen the newer people um, I think I'd like to have seen the newer speakers put a little bit more education into it instead of just straight from their own experience there was some new speakers there that were very good and they were new at it I think if they would have been more educated educational instead of just telling stories. I think that would have been a little bit better. That's what I noticed, too. There was a couple of them, too, that I attended, too, that it was almost like we were right into the advanced class. It was just... I sat there and tried to put two and two together. You know, I'm not going to say the specifics, but it, it was like I could understand it if you gave me maybe a few more hours at it, but when you only have an hour to really tell the, the basics of what you're trying to explain. I'd like to see more demonstration. Uh, seminars 
there was not many of those. Like the year before, Ernie and I went and did mask uh, making. And it was, oh, and Azure Green also did mask making. It was enjoyable. It was, they, she showed us how to do it. We got a product out of it. We got our hands dirty, which pagans, of course, like. I do have pictures, by the way, of Mama D all, like, funky. So if anybody wants to buy some, let me know. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's very funny. Yeah, we got some great masks out of it. I would have liked. it worked in well because the ball was a mask ball. ball. Yes, it was. So. Yep, I would have liked to have seen more of those demonstrations. Kitchen witchery would have been a great demonstration. Um, gems, oils, wow. how to make dream pillows, dream magic. Candles. Um, so mm. we're hoping for next year <laughs> that we're going to be a part of that next year and do some demonstrating um, next year in kitchen witchery. So. I enjoyed the uh, creating your own prosperity altar. That was kind of very interesting to me, and that was put on by Mystic Arctic Fox. Um, Aaron and I went to that, and it, and it was, it was, it was pretty cool. She uh, kind of showed us how she sets up her own altar, and of course she said, you know, you set it up to however you want. She said, one of the first things she says is, for prosperity, not just money, but health, um, anything and like that. And she said, one of the first things you should do is wish prosperity, like to your boss, your company, um, your friends, you know, give it away to other people, not just for yourself, um, you know, with the thought that it'll come back to you. And she showed us some of the um, items she uses on her altar, and she set up an example, and she gave us a list of some good ideas and some tips, and, and uh, it was very exciting, and that was pretty neat. Um, Seeking Knowledge, Finding Wisdom was put on by Jeanette Silver. She is from Maine. Um, and using research to connect with your ancestors was led by Heather B. Uh, Biederman, who is um, from the Mankato area. Mm -hmm. I like that you said that about her talking about the prosperity altar as wishing other people um, good fortune and good prosperity. We talk about the karmatic laws, the threefold laws, harm to none, the universal laws a lot. And in fact, that's what we're going to be putting on some podcasts regarding those things coming up in the future. And we always talk about the threefold law and the karmatic law coming back. If you do something bad towards somebody, people are, you know, you think about that and you're always thinking about, hey, what's going to come back towards me? But in the instance of those threefold laws, it works the other way too. If you're doing good works and, and wishing somebody else good, threefold times you back. And people don't speak about that as often as they do as if something bad return comes back. So it's good to hear that somebody's out there preaching um, positive returns and doing good returns. That's also threefold law right there. I know I attended the, the class of, uh, that Cleo did that's part of the, the coven that did the Lady Hathor ritual about numerology. That was a form of divination that I I faintly just remember reading about once in the past, but it was interesting to brush up on that again, how the fact that you took your birth date and the current date today and it kind of it, it sums up a total depending on what you're going to be like how it's going to how you're going to be turning out for judging upon today's date I definitely want to say thank you out there to Wendy definitely. no the whole group the whole group they but, work but, so hard and I would like to say yes absolutely thank you to the whole group but I would like to personally give a thanks to Wendy she is an amazing woman to bring all of this together and her vision and share it with so many people. And the credit that she gave to everyone, she was one of the most gracious people that I have ever met in the pagan community. And so, Wendy, to you and you to your group that put on all such... All the flying monkeys. Oh, all, yes. the wonderful all the flying, flying monkeys. And the flying thank monkeys you, who took care of everyone. Thank you so much for a wonderful time. Let's give them a big three woot woot. One, two, three. Woot 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 woot. Alrighty then. We have to practice on our whoop and our hoop. I really like the, uh, it was mentioned a little while ago about the rooms, the hospitality rooms. Oh, I think yes. last year there was, yes. there was the hospitality room. Yeah. And I think maybe Summerland had one there. I, yeah. Don't quote me on that, please. But, but now this year, all those rooms along the front were all taken in and you could go in there and talk to them and get refreshments make uh, friendship bracelets yep, oh, all yeah. kinds just Share very welcome very open and and i think come on in sit down sit for a spell pretty you much could, you mm -hmm. can walk by and you can tell some of them were doing projects some of them were in deep in discussion and some of them were 
partying hard. I would like to make note of a Mama D thing here. Everybody knows me well. Is the women that worked the hospitality rooms. Absolutely wonderful people. Again, thank you guys yes. for all your hard work. Next year, I would like to see more pagans donate money and put money into the bowl. Um, there wasn't enough of that. I think people need to pay attention to that. Uh, the biggest thing that they were worried about this year, and I know for a fact because I was one of the volunteers, I didn't get enough hours to make my flying monkey t-shirt, but the hours that I did put in, they were very appreciative. So all pagans out there, um, please take an hour or two if you attend next year and help out because it would be so, they would be so gracious. I mean, <laughs> an hour or two of in between wherever um, you can fit it in, they would be really happy. There's a lot of different things that you can volunteer for there. Um, all you have to do is just let them know and they'll stick you somewhere for an hour or two. Um, a lot of help needed setting up and then tearing down and eat you know in the evening when the everything was you know done at the end of the con. So there's something to think about. One of the um, Thomas Lionlord and I went to was um, practice practical Kabbalah and belief by Frater and I'm sorry if I mispronounce your, la your last name, Barbaros. Um, very, very informative. Um, oh, I yeah. did learn. I didn't know nothing about... Uh, I didn't know much about the Kabbalah, but he did um, make it a little more clear for me to understand now. So I really thank you for that class. That was very, very interesting. And... Um, the only other thing I would love to mention is the art show. Oh, oh my yes. God, that was fabulous. And Paul Rucker was the one that was in charge of the art show. Paul, good job, man. Good job. Um, and hopefully you'll be there again next year. Um, he, he had three books, too, that I bought um, on Mastering the Art of Ritual Magic which um, the three, it's like a volume, is going to be condensed into one volume. So I actually got them on sale. <laughs> so giddy. <laughs> but um, it has some really good books on the Quabala for beginners and then Ritual Magic. So if you guys want to check out anything about that, I would definitely check into those. And we'll have everybody, you know, the stuff that we went, we'll have everybody information on there so you guys can go to different sites and everything um like i said the art show though that blew me away how quickly they put that together and how well they had everything set up in the hospitality room was nice it was really good job i loved every time i walked to that hospitality suite they say you know hello well, welcome it's the first spell get a drink you know they yep. were so welcome I like that after the second time I went in there, they just basically pointed me towards the coffee because they get to know you. Mm -hmm. yes. They knew who I was after I walked in one or two times. You know, they knew. Again, I'd like to say I think there should be more donations towards those people next year um, to pay for the food and the absolutely wonderful drink. You just walk in there, you grab a pop, you're not asked any questions. Um, we definitely need to do some more donating in that area. I'd like to see more people from the Fargo area participate in Paganicon next year. Hint, hint, Fargo, yes, Moorhead. Fargo. Or um, anywhere in North Dakota. And, you know, Grand Forks, if you why get, not? If you want to get some classes in and, and learn some rituals and you want to buy things and you want to do this all in one area and then still and communicate with people and then have a great ball afterwards with oh great Oh, my was awesome. Oh, yes. All in one weekend and all in one shot, this is the place to go every year in March. Make your Put it on your calendar for next year in March that you'll make Paganicon because you get everything in one shot. It's wonderful. I believe um, if you want, if this is your first time hearing of such an event, Paganicon, it, their website is... Um, Paganicon.org um, so definitely worth checking out um, if that doesn't work Google Paganicon it'll pop right up we'll have the um, link in the description too yeah, early absolutely. registration is happening yes. right now for next year it is a lot cheaper to early registrate now yes yep. <laughs> and the double tree in was also fabulous yep. uh, yeah the ball was great but on Friday night the night before the ball they had some music and light show 
that yes. was really awesome, I thought. Um, the music was uh, titled a Spiritual Journey of Music and Light by Pirates of Dreamtime, um, consisting of Scott Kieber, Ske- Keith Spears, and Dana Jean Wolter. Um, I thought that was very harmonic, um, very trance-like in their tones and how she sang. And then the light show was put on by um, Magic Lantern, and uh, they have a unique um, where they use kaleidoscope, special effects, hand painted art slides, and they've worked with uh, groups like Velvet Underground, The Doors, Pink oh, Floyd, Floyd, Jethro Tull. Oh no way! And I thought it was nice because it wasn't just strobe lights and lasers. It was old time kaleidoscopes, hand painted stuff. You could tell all over the wall, and it was mixed in with uh, the music of uh, the Pirates of Dreamtime. I thought it went very well together and very hypnotic and trance like. I, I want to ask Aaron because th- I'm glad that you mentioned this because Aaron. Um, talk to me about your reaction to that woman singing when we first walked in. Uh, the minute I walked in, I was in tears. <laughs> in memory, um, in memory, you're correct. The woman that was singing was she the one that was working, was singing uh, that was like the head of the, the Valkyrie singing group at the uh, Twin Cities Paper Pride. I don't remember because I just yes. walked in there yeah. and I came out. Yeah. Yes, she oh, was idiot. the head yes. singer idiot. at Paper Pride. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Walking in, I got goosebumps and immediately had tears in my eyes. And I am a music fanatic. Um, anybody who knows me knows that. And um, it's it's something else when you're touched that deeply, just hearing a note or you know anything. And it, she was absolutely beautiful. And just I am gonna get tears in my eyes now talking about her. It was just wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And I was impressed with the fact that, yeah, like I said, it was not just your normal light show. It was the fact that they had all these different images that would just flash on the wall and they could just change it on a whim and mix it up and all that. Yeah, it was nothing short but impressive. Again, like I said, if you want a weekend that is educational, that is ritualistic, that is fun, that you'll meet... Lots of new people that you'll lots be able to buy. Lots, lots all the of things energy. that you can imagine. Oh. Wonderful energy, music, so much beautiful music and art. artwork, and art, and just making new friends in general. People who share, you know, that whether you're new or or very much pra- well practiced. I mean, the, everybody was so amazing and welcoming. And as somebody who's new to the whole thing, I couldn't express how excited I was, even though I was probably going insane a few times because it was so energetic, but um, I I wouldn't give up the experience for anything, and I can't wait to do it again. And this year, they had, I had actually been and helped them put up the meditation room, and believe me, for um, somebody that's attended it the second year now, that was very welcoming because I was able to go into a, a darkened room. It wasn't dark. And um, there were blankets set up and chairs set up. So if you had mobility issues, either getting down on the floor or getting up off of the floor, you could set up on two chairs and meditate. And they had some wonderful collection of music that I wish I could have got my hands on and copied. But, uh, oh, well. I really but, think everything is there for the weekend that yes. you have. I mean, the hotel is there. Their restaurant is absolutely wonderful at the Doublewood. Um, Panera is right across the street. Anything that you need is right there. There, yep. And the staff from the Double Tree. Oh my God, Apple! Oh, the Double Tree. You right. are so fabulous. You don't know. You all were so helpful and everything. Yeah, we were extremely happy, and it was it was a lot of fun. And again, I'd just like to say that they're having the early registration going on right now. If you go on uh, paganacon.org, like Erin said, and register early it's cheaper um they have a new t-shirt coming out next year Woo! which Yay! i'll be getting myself so you get a t-shirt when you register no the t-shirt oh, extra, 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 extra. But like you can do it when you yeah. register yeah mm-hmm. you can do it and it's just lots of fun lots unless of fun. you volunteer again and then you could i think it's eight wait i think it's eight hours of volunteering and you get the flying monkey t-shirt so yeah, there you go, people. <laughs> Volunteer free T-shirt. Become a flying monkey. <laughs> well, I think we, I think we give this a four pentacle review, don't, don't you? <laughs> I four. say five. <laughs> five. The charts, five. Yeah. Off the charts. <laughs> Off the charts. <laughs> well, I think hopefully that will convince a lot of you out there to, to attend next year, and I hope you loved our review. So, this has been Thomas Landlord Putton and Aaron Lisi. 
Ernie Johnson. Mama D. Johnson. And Azure Star. Mm-hmm. Signing off. Merry meet, merry parts, and merry meet again. Let's it be. Let's, Let's it be. be. We are on the road to Baconic on 2013. Yeah. Yay. Yes. We do count. We do count. In case you're wondering what is what she's referring to, it's coming up here shortly. For those of you who are not familiar of uh, I-94 in Minnesota, heading towards the Twin Cities, there's an interesting business coming up here. It's a veterinary hospital. You wouldn't think that veterinary hospital would have an odd name, but it's catchy. We do cows! And <laughs> Good times. <laughs>